Hey everyone, welcome back again. NASA recently announced that SpaceX is making significant progress towards demonstrating in-space refueling of Starship, a crucial technology for future lunar missions. Amit Kshatriya, NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator for the Moon to Mars program, shared updates during a meeting with the NASA Advisory Council's Human Exploration and Operations Committee. SpaceX achieved a milestone in this endeavor during the latest Starship test flight on March 14. The flight included an in-flight propellant transfer demonstration supported by a NASA tipping point contract awarded in 2020. The objective was to transfer at least 10 metric tons of liquid oxygen from a header tank to the main tank of the Starship upper stage while in space. Although neither SpaceX nor NASA provided updates immediately after the flight, Kshatriya indicated during the committee meeting that the test appeared successful. He mentioned that SpaceX performed an intertank transfer of cryogens on Flight 3, which was deemed successful based on initial assessments. Further analysis of the test is still ongoing. The next significant milestone is planned for 2025, involving the docking of two starships in orbit with one transferring propellants to the other. This plan has passed a flight system review, ensuring the readiness of the mission architecture and key subsystems. In this mission scenario, a target starship will launch first, followed by a chaser starship three to four weeks later. The two vehicles will dock, with propellant transfer taking place from the chaser to the target. Following the demonstration, the starships will undock and deorbit. Before this test, SpaceX will need to address several challenges, including understanding propellant slows dynamics and settling through requirements during docking. Kshatriya emphasized the importance of SpaceX's flight test program in ensuring a thorough understanding of these factors. Propellant transfer technology is crucial for SpaceX's ambitious plans for Starship missions, particularly for the Human Landing System, HLS version, intended for lunar landings. This technology will enable multiple Starship launches to transfer propellant into a depot in low Earth orbit, which will then fuel the HLS Starship for lunar missions. The exact number of refueling launches required remains uncertain, as factors like propellant boil-off and leakage need further investigation. Kshatriya highlighted ongoing efforts by SpaceX to better understand these factors and optimize the refueling process. Following the in-space propellant transfer test, SpaceX plans to conduct an uncrewed demonstration mission of the HLS Starship, culminating in a lunar landing. This mission will also include an ascent demo to demonstrate Starship's capability to lift off from the lunar surface. Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX, reiterated the importance of achieving full and rapid reusability of boosters and ships, along with orbital refilling of the ship, by the end of next year. These advancements are essential for realizing the vision of making life multiplanetary. SpaceX's 30th robotic Dragon cargo ship is on its way back to Earth from the International Space Station, ISS. Today, at 1.10 p.m., Dragon left the ISS while passing over Thailand. Since it was nighttime there, there wasn't much to see during the undocking. If everything goes as planned, Dragon will splash down in the ocean off the coast of Florida around 1 a.m. on Tuesday, April 30th. This Dragon mission is called CRS-30, marking SpaceX's 30th delivery to the ISS under a contract with NASA. CRS-30 started on March 21st when a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket carried the capsule into space. Two days later, on March 23rd, Dragon docked with the ISS, bringing about three tons of scientific gear and supplies. On its return journey, Dragon carries over 4,100 pounds. 1,860 kilograms of supplies and scientific experiments meant for the microgravity environment of the space station, according to NASA officials. The splashdown off Florida's coast allows quick transport of the experiments to NASA's Space Systems Processing Facility at Kennedy Space Center. This minimizes the exposure of samples to Earth's gravity, facilitating data collection. 
Dragon stands out as the only cargo craft capable of safely bringing gear back from the ISS. Other cargo vehicles like Russia's Progress and Northrop Grumman's Cygnus burn up in Earth's atmosphere when their missions are complete. Even with CRS-30's departure, another SpaceX vehicle remains docked to the ISS. This Dragon is part of the Crew-8 astronaut mission for NASA. Crew-8, launched on March 3rd, transported NASA astronauts Matthew Dominic, Michael Barrett, and Jeanette Epps, along with Alexander Grebenkin of Russia's space agency Roscosmos, for a six-month stay aboard the ISS. Boeing is gearing up for its first Starliner mission with NASA, but the possibility of private astronauts joining future flights is on the horizon. Mark Nappy, the spacecraft's program manager, emphasized the company's focus on launching the Crew Flight Test, CFT for NASA, slated to carry astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams to space aboard an Atlas V rocket. Nappy stressed that their primary attention is on fulfilling NASA's missions, with plans for up to six or seven astronaut flights. Private flights are not a current priority, as Boeing anticipates continuing NASA missions until at least 2030, when the International Space Station might retire. Boeing's approach contrasts with SpaceX, which has already embarked on multiple missions to the ISS, including flights for private company Axiom Space. While SpaceX has ventured into private astronaut missions, Boeing is cautious due to the uncertain market and ongoing technical challenges with the Starliner spacecraft. Starliner faced setbacks, including a failed uncrewed flight in 2019 and subsequent delays due to technical issues. Despite these challenges, NASA's commercial crew program manager, Steve Steak, commended Boeing's efforts in addressing the spacecraft's problems. Preparations for CFT are underway, with astronauts Wilmore and Williams undergoing quarantine and training. If successful, the first operational mission is expected in early 2025, with a crew including NASA's Mike Finke, Scott Tingle, and the Canadian Space Agency's Joshua Kutrick. The crew is diligently preparing for CFT's launch, conducting thorough tests of the spacecraft's systems and emergency procedures, manual flying exercises and assessments of critical functions, such as solar panel activation, are part of the certification process for extended six-month missions. Despite the challenges and delays, Boeing remains committed to ensuring the safety and reliability of the Starliner spacecraft. The collaboration between NASA, Boeing, United Launch Alliance, and their contractors has been instrumental in overcoming obstacles and moving forward with the program. As the aerospace industry evolves, the potential for private astronaut missions continues to be explored. While Boeing currently prioritizes its partnership with NASA, the prospect of commercial space travel remains an exciting avenue for future exploration and innovation.